Greetings, brothers and sisters. Hello and welcome back to Eva's House of Spirit. I'm Eva and I am here to continue on with the 77 question witchy community tag. Today I will be doing questions 41 through 60. This is my part three of this tag. I'm doing it in parts because let's face it, it's a long tag and I thought to make it easier to watch and also easier to record I would do it in sections just my preference I will have these questions 41 through 60 in the description of this video so that you can just copy and paste them if you plan on doing this tag as well in segments or even if, however you want to do it you just you can copy and paste and you know do your tag like that so you don't have to type out everything I say and really like you know be pause in the video and all that kind of stuff it just makes it easier for you to do the tag, I think. So anyway, that said, um, let's get into this tag. I want to try and move along pretty quickly. I want to try to make this video as concise as possible. Once again, I have notes with me, so if I look like I'm reading, it's because I'm referring to my answers that I have pre-thought out and written or typed up. Okay? That said, here we go. Question 41. How do you handle rejection from a fellow witch that refuses to do a reading or spell for you? Honestly, I accept it. If they've agreed to do something for you, that's one thing. But other than that, if you ask them and they're like, sorry, no, no one's, no one owes you anything, you know, and I understand this and I would never get bent out of shape if I asked somebody, hey, do you think you can do this for me? And they were like, no, I'd be like, okay. Question 42. Do you think casting circles are necessary? Nope. <laughs> I don't cast circles and I get by just fine. Also, there are many magical traditions that don't include circle casting in any way, shape, or form that I know of. Um, and they get by just fine, too. I understand the reasoning behind casting circles. You know, it makes sense, but I personally don't cast circles anymore. Once again, it's different strokes for different folks. I don't think they're necessary. Question 43. If Steven Spielberg called and wanted to make a movie of your life, who would you want to play you? <laughs> I would want either Helena Bonham Carter to play me, or I'd want Feruja Bulk to play me. One or the other. I think they're both great. Question 44. What is some advice you would give to someone who has not found their deity? I'd just say don't worry too much about it. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Patrons are teachers of sorts. When the time is right, a patron will come forward and you'll recognize him or her as such, assuming, of course, that you're meant to be guided by a single patron. Some people are instead meant to be free spirits guided by, you know, many different powers. Some people are meant to work with many different powers. You'll just know. You'll just know. You know, and, and don't don't stress. You don't have to be like all these people that have a patron. If you don't happen to have a patron, it's okay. It's okay. You don't have to have like one god or one goddess alone that you work with. It's fine. If if you're meant to have a patron, your patron's gonna show up and you're gonna recognize them because they're gonna make themselves known. They will they will make it very apparent. I have personally found that when a patron is trying to get someone's attention, I at least in my experience, they're pretty persistent. And they're gonna make their presence very like they're gonna pound you over the head with signs and stuff until you put two and two together. So don't worry about it. You know, don't worry about it. And even if you never happen to get a patron come forward, it's not like, oh my god, you can't get by, you know. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. What's meant for you will happen. Chill. Okay, so there's that. Um, question 45. What is some advice that was given to you that you pass along because it made an impact on your path? The best advice I've ever received was to do what works for me and never mind what doesn't. I was also told not to listen to people 
who claim to have all the answers because that's just bullshit. Nobody has all the answers. And I was told not to listen to people who felt compelled to criticize me. These bits of advice were all so very freeing, empowering, and uplifting. These bits of advice opened the way for me to a great degree. So much so that I don't just live by this advice, I also share this advice with others when and where I can. One size does not fit all when it comes to magic and spirituality. Again, different strokes for different folks. Question 46. Where do you buy your herbs? Usually I buy them from the supermarket. Sometimes they come from the dollar store. I also grow and harvest my own. Um, or sometimes I'll just like collect wild herbs from my yard. Occasionally I am gifted herbs by other people. Um, basically I get my herbs when and where I can. You know? Um, 47. How did you feel casting your first circle? Silly, scared, stumbly, etc. When I was a teenager, when I was a Wiccan, and I first began casting circles, I remembered that it felt like I was doing something profoundly powerful. It felt very reverent to me. Um, question 48. What was your first successful spell? I honestly cannot remember. There were so many spells from the time that I began up until now that I, I cannot remember what my first successful spell was, to be honest. I mean, we're talking years of spells. Years. I mean, it's, I can't even, I can't remember. I wish I had, I wish I had kept like a witch's notebook back then, because then that would be really helpful because then I could probably answer this question for you, but unfortunately I did not. So I don't remember, I'm sorry. Um, okay, okay, okay. 49. What is your general practice for meditation? Generally, I tend to lie down, relax, close my eyes, and allow my mind to wander. Normally when I meditate in this way, I do it at night. And sure, I know that um, lying down often leads to falling asleep, and so a lot of people will say, don't lay down when you're going to meditate. But um, I normally have trouble sleeping at night, so I don't fight sleep if it comes. Um, and I will also add, I'd like to add that um, this isn't the only way that I meditate. This is just the way that I tend to meditate, generally speaking, and most usually. Um, question 50. Are you a day walker or a nightcomer? Nightcomer all the way. Hands down. I'm all about the night. I, it's so weird. It's not even about how much sleep I get or don't get. At night, you know, as the day progresses into night, I, I become more and more awake. And in the daytime, I am so tired all the time. I don't know what it is. It's just the way that I am... It's the way I was built, I guess. I am a night person. I have always been a night person, even as a child. I remember my mother and my, you know, my one sister that I shared a room with, they used to just be driven up the wall to try to get me to go to sleep. I was the worst. I mean, I've always been like this. Um, okay, question 51. How and when did you know you wanted to be on this path? Hang on just one moment. I have to scroll a little bit to get to the bottom. Or a little, I have to scroll down. Okay. Question 51. How and when did you know you wanted to be on this path? How and when did I know that I wanted to be a witch? I was very young when I first became fascinated with witches. You know, I was a child at the time. But it took me a good while to actually pursue witchcraft, the occult, etc. Because until about my teen years, I didn't realize that witches and other magical practitioners were actually more than just fictional or legendary figures. However, um, looking back, I find this to be kind of odd. Because my mother would tell me stories that were true. 
um, that involve witches called bruxas in Portuguese. But somehow I didn't put two and two together. I believed her stories, but I somehow didn't make the connection that the bruxas in her true stories were real life versions of the witches I've heard of in like fairy tales, legends, myths, etc. Until I saw some Wiccans demonstrating a love spell on a TV talk show, I didn't make the connection that one could consciously and actively pursue a witchy like path or lifestyle. When I finally made the connection, that's when I decided I wanted to be a witch. Um, question 52. What type of pagan are you? Wow. <laughs> What kind of question is that? It's like, what kind of pagan are you? You know, what kind of pagan are you, man? I don't even know how to answer that. I'm just going to say I'm I'm just me, and I do the best that I can. Um, <laughs> question 53. What candle color do you use the most? Um, I haven't kept any sort of record... But I would probably say white, because white is my go-to color when dealing with situations that aren't cut and dry. If something is kind of complicated, I will just use white. Question 54. What area would you like to see your craft grow in? I'd like to develop the psychic abilities that don't come naturally to me, um, such as clairaudience, which is like hearing spirits, or psychometry, which is like when you touch an object and you receive impressions from touching an object, things like that. That don't those those don't come really naturally to me. Those are not my particular forte. Uh, you know, there are other other um, psychic senses that I they're not my thing. I'm just more of an intuitive and a scryer. You know, I just kind of I also have a I think the word is clair claircognizance. I think it is claircognizance. I just know things, um, or maybe it's clairsentience, I forget, but it's, I just know things, and I just, I'm an intuitive, and I'm just a natural scryer, like, those are the kind of things that come naturally to me. I wouldn't say that I'm an empath, because I have no problem distinguishing my own feelings from the feelings that I can pick up on outside of myself, um, so I wouldn't say I'm an empath, but I, it would be cool to be able to, you know, develop that as well, you know, to be able to have that experience and utilize it on command. I mean, I wouldn't want to be bombarded by it, but if I could, like, turn that on and off, you know, that would be pretty cool. Um, and, you know, just certain other... Um, certain other... psychic sensitivities that are not my forte yet. And also, another thing I would like to develop, I would like to get better at methods of divination that are also not my forte. You know, and I believe that, honestly, truth be told, I believe that Everybody has the ability to do any kind, to, to be any kind of, um, to be receptive in any sort of psychic way. I believe we all have the potential, but I believe that usually a person will have certain sensitivities that just naturally flow. You know, like for me, it's just intuition and you know, just knowing, like, I just get certain knowings, like gut feelings and things like that, that, that prove to be true. I get, like, confirmation on things, things that I would have no way of knowing about. Or, like, scrying, you know, like, I can look at something and in, in, you know, let's say the wood grain on the table or something, or in a picture, or, you know, or whatever, clouds in the sky, whatever, coffee, whatever it is that I'm looking at, I can, if I really, like, just take a moment and look at it, I can see things that will then speak to me, you know, symbolically and tell me stories, in a sense, they'll tell me stories, not literally, it's not like I'm hearing stories in my head, but they'll sort of tell me stories of what's, what I'm looking to find information on. So those, you know, I believe everybody has certain things that just come naturally, and then there are certain things that don't, but I believe that everybody can develop the things that do not come naturally to them. That's what I personally believe. And I would like to develop the sensitivities that don't come naturally to me, as well as the divinatory methods that are not my forte. Okay, question 55. What is your preference to buy or to make tools? Um, honestly, I prefer making things when and where I can because I'm not Mama Warbucks. You know, <laughs> it's nice to be able to be like, oh, I, I have the money to buy this or that or this. 
but honestly it's just like if I can if I can save money by making something or repurposing something you know or using something else that I have already instead of some other thing that I have to spend a lot of money to acquire or a decent amount of money to acquire I'm probably going to take the more personal um, creative sort of route it's just something that resonates with me and that's I just feel like that's that's what I prefer to do okay um, question 56 what fictional which book or screening I assume screening means movie or TV show or whatever inspired you the most Elvira mistress of the dark I wanted to be her in junior high <laughs> Honestly, seriously, I'm not even kidding with you. I wanted to be her in junior high. <laughs> um, there was a secondhand store, and it had, I remember I went there, and they had this costume jewelry ring, and I don't have it anymore, and I freaking wish I still did, and I don't remember what I did with it. It was like a square red jeweled um, ring, and I, I bought it, and I would wear it like on my first finger, kind of like how she had her ring, and you know, I would try to do my hair similar, not like as beehive poofy as hers, but like I would kind of like put my hair back, you know, trying to be like her. It was so funny. Like I was trying to be Elvira. I mean, of course I didn't be like walking around with my tits out. <laughs> my mother would have beat my ass if I tried to do something like that. But, you know, she was just very inspirational to me when I was young, you know. So, anyway, question 57 were you alone or in a coven for your first spell? I was alone. Um, question 58. What is your favorite candle or incense scent for magical purposes? Apple. Particularly red apple or apple cinnamon. Because I find personally that um, apple is a good scent for working with spirits. And it is per in particular a good scent for working with the dead. Um... Question 59, where is your favorite place to go to reconnect with nature? My front and backyards. I like to do gardening and just go outside and just be out in my yards. You know, it's, I mean, there are so many places. I mean, I've taken hikes in the woods and such. You know, that's also very reaffirming and everything. Or even going to the beach or like, you know, anywhere out in nature is nice. But I, my favorite place, I suppose, to an extent... It's just, I, I love so much that I can just go out my front door or my back door and just bam, nature, you know, that is so nice. Because, I mean, I, I have decent-sized property. I mean, it's not ginormous, but I have a good-sized backyard. And even my front yard, like, the front lawn is pretty big and the garden in the front is a pretty good size, you know. So, like, you step out and you're like, it's like my own little nat natural um, paradise, you know. It's like a nice little place. I like it. It's very cool to just be able to go outside and just have that little bit of solace there, you know. Um, question 60. Do you believe in fantasy creatures like unicorns, gnomes, fairies, etc.? Yes. Absolutely. Now, have I seen any with my, like, naked eyes? Not that I know of. Um, no, but... I kind of, I take them sort of to be like other spirits, you know, you may not necessarily always see them, but that doesn't mean that they're not there, 